Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk and today I'm going to show you how to use the Models Builder API. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've got the API extension installed in Visual Studio. So if you go to Tools, Extensions and Updates, let me just go back there, Tools, Extensions and Updates, and then you go to Online, and then you need to search for Models Builder, or one word, and then you'll see this one here, that's the one that you need to install. So make sure you get that installed first. You might need to restart Visual Studio after you've installed it. I've already got it installed, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, in the last video I did, I showed you how to use Umbraco Cloud locally. So I'm using the same solution as I had before, and I've got it now, got it currently running. So this is the website that I was showing you before. So I'm going to get this working with Models Builder and using the API approach. And the benefit of doing that is that I get to have the models in my core library as opposed to being uh, part of the web uh, project. So they actually go into a class library. So let's get started then. So the first thing we need to do is we need to, in this folder, in this project, paulseal.core, um, in the models folder, I want to add a class. So I need to stop the site from running. I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to call it models builder. Just so it's clear that these models that it generates are from models builder. I'm just going to click choose add. And then on this, I'm going to select it and then do properties. And then here it says run custom tool. Uh, sorry, it says custom tool name. So I need to call it Umbraco Models Builder. And then the next step is to do tools, options. And then in this options list, there is actually an Umbraco option and Models Builder options. So in there, I need to put in the site URL. So whatever the site runs under, the username and the user password. So this is the username and password to be able to log in and access through the API, uh, your document types and things like that. So I just need to make sure I've got the right URL. So if I go to the properties pane, you can see that the URL we're using is this one. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to go back to the options menu, Braco Models Builder, and I'm going to put in my username and password. Obviously, I'm going to edit this out. I don't want you to see it. I need to make sure I've got some config settings in, in the web config file. I need to find where it's got um, Models Builder enable, enable API, and models mode. So I need models mode to be nothing. I need models builder enable to be true and enable API to be true. So make sure you've got those three app settings in your solution. So the next thing we need to do before we try and run the custom tool is to install the package. So the package name is install uh, sorry, the command that you put in here is install package umbraco.modelsbuilder.api. And I think we might also need to install it on the class library as well. We'll see. Might not need to. I'm just saying yes to uh, these modifications that it needs to make. So it looks like I probably don't need to install it on the class library. So now that's been successfully installed, I should be able to have a go at running the custom tool. Right now I've got the API um, package installed in the web project. I've got the custom tool set up here on, with a class. I've got my username and password 
in the custom tool settings I've got the extension installed so I'm ready to start generating the models so if I right click on this and do run custom tool it should allow me to do it if it fails this time it's because it's not got it the site running but we'll try it without the site running first of all there we are so it's generated these classes so these are partial classes and it's got some red errors at the moment so the reason for these is because if you think back to what we did on the previous one so this probably only applies for the people using Umbraco Cloud with Visual Studio locally. Um, it's It can't see the Umbraco um, DLLs. So the way we can fix that is for, to add a reference to this class library. So if we go to click on the class library, add reference, and then we browse. So then within this, we go to packages, into Umbraco core lib and then we want to choose the Umbraco DLL I think and the Umbraco core DLL if you choose those two click on OK then you should see these all light up and also yeah this does need to know about um, uh, models builder okay so it looks like we might need to install that package so what we'll do there to fix this issue is we'll just do install package braco models builder API. And actually what I'll do before I do that, I'll just check because it might just be a case of um, we just need to install the core library for models builder. So I'm just going to just find out that. So um NuGet models builder API. So we've got the NuGet and we can see what its dependencies are and it's looking for umbraco.models builder. So actually all we need to do on this is just change that to be umbraco models builder for the core library. So install package umbraco models builder. And if you notice, I chose the core library here as well. So now that's also resolved the red um, highlighting that I was getting there. So everything should be OK. So if I give it a build. Yeah, build succeeded. No failures. So now we should be able to run the site. If I do it without debugging, you don't need to debug. Just do control F5 and let's have a look at the site as it is at the moment. I'm not using the models yet. I'm just purely um, I, don't, I don't have any properties on those doc types at the moment I'm just I've just got HTML in there so let's have a look at the template solution explorer views and then home so if you see this this is just the default that I had before and then if we go to here oh So if, as I started to do angle brackets after template page, it says import paulseal.core.models.home. So yes, I want to do that. And what that's done is that is saying that it's going to use the home model on here. So as I said, I don't actually have any properties on this document type at the moment. So what I can do is I can log into the back office, add a property, generate the models again, and we'll get to see that. So if I go to settings, document types, home. Now I would use um, compositions normally, but for quickness, I'm just going to do this. And I'm just going to put a field on um, person name. And I'm just going to reuse the text string, submit. And I'll also do I'll leave job title. I'll show you a good way of doing that. So we've got person name. So now let's go back to the solution and then let's get this to regenerate the models. Run custom tool. Says uh, completing the request. So that's done. So now if we go into home, 
and then we'll have a look to see if it's got a new property. Yes, uh, person name. So on the home template, we can actually do at model dot content dot person name and it's strongly typed now so I've got that value I can use it so if I do a build because it's not recognizing that so it's it's saying that it doesn't have a property of that so it's red but actually it does have that property and when we view the site on the front end you'll see that it works Oh, and actually I didn't complete it. I didn't fill it out. So let me just quickly go into home and put Paul seal and save and publish. Now if I refresh this, we can see Paul seal on there. If I go back and just change that to Bob Carroll G's again. Save and publish and then refresh. We can see, hello, I am Bob Carroll G's. So that's updated. That's using Models Builder. And that's how we get to it. And so we've got paulseal.core.models.home. So one other way you could do it is to remove that bit there and just use home. We can do a using statement here at using like that. And then it just keeps it cleaner there. So we can do that. And then another good thing about this with this models builder API and the way it generates these classes as partial classes is that we can extend this because it's a partial class we can actually add other properties to it but without messing with these ones that get generated so if i was to put in a new class in here called home at the same level as modelsbuilder.cs so if i do one called home.cs if we just have a look at that in the tree and then if i do public partial class Then what I can do is I can do um, public string job title. And then I can just say Paul, uh, sorry, um, Umbraco developer. So now I can uh, build that, control shift B. And then if I want to, in my view, I can use that property. And it will be available the same as the other property was in model.content.jobtitle. So then if I was to refresh that, it will say Umbraco developer in there again, even though it's pulling from the property there. So just to see that that does change, if I change it, um, I will do... I don't know, road sweeper. Just to give it a build again, give it a refresh. So we should be seeing that change to road sweeper. There we go. So that's coming from that custom property that I created there. Uh, so that way you can extend these uh, models. And I, I really like that about this. So yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use Models Builder with an Umbraco Cloud project as well. And obviously this applies to your other projects. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please click on like and subscribe to my channel and uh, feel free to share the video with your friends. And uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can. Um, I am at CodeSharePaul on Twitter. And if you go into the Umbraco UK Festival, uh, I should be there. I will be there as well. So uh, please come over and say hi. It'd be nice to meet you if you've watched this video. Uh, so yeah, thanks ever so much. See you on the next video. Bye.